Hi, I'm Wendy Williams. I'm Steve Cece. And we're both professors in the Department of Human Development at Cornell. We have a paper in the most recent issue of Current Directions in Psychological Science. The paper is called Sex Differences in Math Intensive Fields. And in this paper, we look at three classes of factors that are considered to be potential causes of women's underrepresentation. I'm going to just review those factors, and Steve's going to comment when he has a chance. <laughs> those factors are ability differences, sex discrimination and biases against women, and women's preferences and choices. Yeah, let's begin by, by pointing out that women really are underrepresented in these math-intensive fields. If you look at the top 100 research universities, only 9 to 16 percent of the tenure-line professors uh, in math-intensive fields are women. And among full professors, it's under 10 percent. So the first issue is abilities, and what specifically is it about women's cognitive capacity that may differ from men's, and are these differences relevant to women's performance in math-intensive fields? Yeah, at the midpoint of the math ability distribution, there's virtually no difference between men and women. But the further out you go on the right tail, the ratio gets more unbalanced. So among the top 1% of math scores on math aptitude tests, such as the SAT math, the GRE quantitative, it's a two to one ratio, two males for every female. But of course the question is, are the differences that are being assessed at these very ends of the ability distribution relevant to performance in math intensive fields? And there's not a lot of data that bear directly on the importance of one of the abilities, mental rotational ability, in the daily lives and career of, say, a psychologist or an economist or a mathematician. So when we looked at this class of factors, we concluded that there are real differences. They're potentially somewhat important, but in the broader picture, they're probably not that important in explaining women's underrepresentation holistically, that they're more important in esoteric examples about women doing worse at certain tasks than men. Yeah, just as one uh, graphic illustration, if the ratio of the top 1% of mathematics is 2 to 1 in favor of males, the ratio among professors in math intensive fields is more like 4 or 5 to 1. So it simply can't be ability differences driving down to representation. Something else has to be going on or there'd be a lot more women in these fields. Moving then to something else that may be going on, we looked at sex discrimination. And in particular, we looked at what the patterns were today in terms of interviewing, hiring, and how women fared compared to men in the STEM fields. And we want to acknowledge at the onset that no one is suggesting that discrimination has not been historically very important in women's historical underrepresentation. But the question is, is discrimination against women important today? Yeah, now the best studies, the large-scale uh, analysis by the National Research Council indicate that in math-intensive fields, of those women who apply for tenure-track jobs, they're statistically more likely to be interviewed and they're statistically more likely to be offered the job. So there certainly isn't an explanation for their underrepresentation in terms of search committees discriminating against them. And after a broad review of this literature, we concluded that today, in the modern era, it's probably the case that sex discrimination does not explain the underrepresentation of women, which caused us to turn to the third potential factor, which is women's preferences and women's choices, spanning issues such as what career to specialize in, what branch of science to specialize in, and the choice to potentially work in a part-time or non-tenure track job to enable more time with children, caretaking of children and caretaking of elderly parents. Yeah, if you look at the surveys, even starting with pre-adolescence, you see these pronounced sex differences. Very, very few women uh, say they want to major in engineering, for example, or become a physicist when they grow up. But you see 20 to 30 percent of the pre-adolescent boys saying precisely that. Women, on the other hand, say they want to be physicians or biologists or attorneys or psychologists. And so we see 76% of veterinary medical doctorates going to women and 50% of PhDs in biology going to women. And so the question becomes, are women simply not as interested in becoming physicists or economists or engineers? Are they interested rather in becoming veterinarians and medical doctors? And if that's in fact the case, is it in fact a bad thing? And we concluded that these kinds of, of issues were far more salient in the overall representation picture than were issues such as abilities and 
and sex discrimination. And to close, we should note that we also looked at issues about children and caretaking and the amount of time women spend relative to their male partners on children and caretaking. And we concluded that women's choices to opt out of the tenure line were also extremely important in the underrepresentation picture. Read the article. Yeah, read the article. <laughs>